I love this time of year. It's an amazing time to do your planning for 2025. And I do tend to start it early, around October, November, so that I'm really giving myself enough time to put my thoughts into place, my plans into place for the year ahead. And the first thing I do is a comprehensive review of what I've enjoyed and not enjoyed during the past year. What has worked well, what isn't working well, and in particular what's happening with my diary, what's, uh, what's you know, had the flow, where have I been in the zone, what has really delivered the results, and of course I'll do a financial analysis as well throughout. You know, I, um, you know, am a big believer in reinvention and we, even as coaches ourselves, we often put blinkers on ourselves. You know, I have been always sort of thinking, oh, well, my end game will be, I'll eventually move towards writing books. I'll eventually move towards, um, you know, doing board work. I'll eventually move towards, you know, doing more education, et cetera, et cetera. Why do I have to wait? You know, I've got this, you know, you know, these ideas of things I'd like to do. Why not bring that forward? Why do I have to wait to a set point in time to do what I really want to do in life? So I'm bringing some things forward next year. 2025 will be a year where I'm going to write a number of books. I want to do more education. I want to do more videos. I want to do more video series. Um, you know, I really want to step that side of things up because that's where I can have more impact across a broader audience. And as my platforms are starting to lift and I'm getting more and more followers, I've got this opportunity to make a bigger impact. So, you know, I am myself challenging my own thoughts on how I want to run my life next year. And I'm thinking closely about my diary. So my, my health routine has really changed things up a bit and I'm finding that I don't have enough time in the morning if I'm going to start calls at nine o'clock so we're going to shift the calls to 10 it's going to give me that little bit more time to have a more relaxed uh, morning where I can do my thought leadership I can do my meditation I can do my exercise I can do my health routines and then I'm going to work a little bit later into the evening so you know changing my diary has a big impact on how I'm going to structure my life in 2025 and so having that innate sense of what works for me what hasn't worked so well where I've been frustrated where I haven't felt in the zone making those mental choices now so that I can plan for the year ahead and set the diary for how we're going to operate um, and of course you've got to think about how you're going to generate your income and things like that but you know certainly I think a lot of people don't go radical enough with their planning and I really challenge you to think about, well, what would you be doing in that semi-retirement phase? What would you be doing when you didn't, when you've won the lotto and you don't have to work? Start to bring some of those things forward. Don't plan for, you know, 10 years time, this is what you'll be doing. Those 10 year time plans, they're the things I think you should be thinking about and seeing what you can start to bring forward because that is more likely to get you onto your dest destiny, your pathway in life. That is where you've, you know, sort of mentally made a note that that was something that would be absolutely fabulous for you to do with no constraints, when you didn't have a money problem, when you didn't have, um, you know, a time problem. These were the things you've been dreaming about, hoping to do bring those things forward so that's what I'm going to do next year I'm bringing those those plans that I had for 10 years time I'm bringing them forward I'm bringing them to 2025 now I might not be able to do all of them but I'm certainly going to bring some of them forward and I've got a funny feeling that if I do that successfully I'm going to be more successful I'm going to make more money I'm going to be happier I'm going to be in the zone and I'm going to recalibrate, you know, and get rid of all the things that I didn't enjoy. And that's one key thing I really also recommend is all the things you said yes to, but you didn't really want to do all the things that you ended up doing you know, begrudgingly because you'd committed to it, uh, whether that be speaking events, whether that be travel, whether that be, you know, helping a mate out. Go into 2025 with a really clear set of rules about what you will and won't do. So be clear about the things that you don't want to do that are no longer serving you personally 
and get them out of your diary. Make sure they don't come into the diary in 2025. This way, if you do this planning now, really get into some sessions and by all means, book into my diary for a career planning session, a, a life planning session. Let's look at what's possible. Let's take the blinkers off. Let's put the plans in place because that's what I'm doing at the moment for myself. And it's an incredibly liberating experience to get this right. And it's fun, you know, planning for the future, putting things in place, uh, playing, you know, shaking the cards up again. It's an incredible way to head into 2025. Start the planning early so you've got plenty of time to percolate, get the ideas right, get the plans right. Um, and then you can really head into 2025 coming right out of the gates on day one with a completely different system of operating, great diary, great routines, great health routines, all the priorities identified so that you can really allocate your time effectively as we head into the new year.